Uh, listen, um, you moved from Manchester United following that Champions League winning season in 2008. Um, you were one of Pep Guardiola's first signings. Firstly, why did you leave Manchester United? Well, uh, for various reasons. The, fir the first and more, t more important one is because Barcelona had an interest uh, on me. Uh, for me, Barcelona was everything. Uh, I was born being a member. I went to Camp Nou every weekend to watch the team. It's true that I left when I was 17 to Manchester United because I thought that at that time for my career was better to join Manchester United. They were... Um, having uh, more trust on the young guys rather than in Barcelona, so I said, why not? Um, but I was 21 at that time. Rio and Bidic were the the two centre backs in the in the club, and I mean they were two of the best centre backs at that time in that generation. And it was difficult to get minutes, um, so I went to Sir Alex and I said, listen, Barcelona is coming to to sign me, please don't put like a crazy number uh, because then they will not uh, sign me and I really want to go back, please make this favor. And he asked, I think, for 5 million, which at that time it was a small amount um, and I could join uh, Barcelona. What was Sir Alex like when you met him, when you signed for Manchester United and also what was your relationship like with him? Very, very good. I al I always considered uh, Sir Alex as my second father uh, at that time because I arrived when I was 17. I was living in a family uh, in, in, in Manchester the first year until I was 18. Um, but I went without my family, without my friends. I was alone, new language, new country, new culture. So for me, it was tough uh, at the start. Then it helped me a lot that period because it makes you like uh, strong and, and very focus on on football but at that time it was pretty tough and sir alex helped me a lot to to really manage that uh, um you went from sir alex to pep guardiola i'm not going to ask you to choose who's better because of course the right answer is sir alex but what <laughs> what what do you think it is listen we know pep guardiola is a bit of a superstar a bit of a genius we know that and everywhere he's gone he's had ridiculous success can you put your finger on what makes pep so special because he's so obsessed on football and, and he can stay one day in a room, just focus on uh, the opposite team and what is his weakness and what is his strong things and when he has to attack, what he has to do when, when the team has to defend the same. And then to the player, it gives you the right information um, for you to, to perform very, very well. Also, his speech is very good. He knows when he has to motivate you with which speech uh, at the right time and this is very important for the player because at the end of the day every year you need to have that motivation to keep going and keep winning and he does it very well are their styles similar at all or completely different because you've got a new age manager in pep and of course sir alex goes back to manchester united from like the mid 80s or late 80s are their styles similar or are they completely different at that time, it was very different, but not the style. It was more of the position of, of Pep in Barcelona and Sir Alex in, in Manchester United. Uh, obviously, it was the last years of Sir Alex and the first years of Pep. Pep didn't have the power that Sir Alex had in Manchester United. Sir Alex was more like a manager, more like, than just a coach. Pep Guardiola was just a coach in Barcelona. So Sir Alex, just to put you an example, maybe some trainings, they, he was not even there in the pitch. It was Carlos Queiroz at the time. And, and he was more focused on the game day, the speech, uh, and making putting the team, these kind of things. Pep Guardiola, when he arrived, obviously he was very young and he wanted to really control everything. And his role was different than Sir Alex. They had similarities uh, uh, with the speech because both of them, they are like truly motivators and they know how to really engage the team and, and uh, so they, they can perform. Um, but also related to tactics, I, I would say that uh, both were brilliant, uh, knowing exactly what the team needs in order to attack and defend in every game because the situations are different and, and they knew how to do it. Did it take you a while then when you went back to Barcelona to adjust the Pep style? Because a lot of players nowadays leave whatever club they're at, go to Manchester City and they say it's quite hard to adjust because, as you said, he's so focused on the tactics. Did you find it difficult? Did it take you a while? No, it was very, very easy for me because basically I was born in Barcelona like him and we were in La Masia, which is the Youth Academy of Barca, and we played the same style. So for me, that was a big advantage because it was like very easy to adapt to to his idea of, of the way to, to, to play football. And it's true that for some of the signings and the new players, it's, it's difficult to 
start. The first months are difficult. That mm -hmm. we do this exercise that is the box, that uh, the two in the middle, and that you have to keep the ball. And there is some new players that they arrive, and the first month they don't touch the ball <laughs> during all the exercise because I mean it's crazy for them. Um, but yeah, this is the, the Pep style. The, the expectation levels, I'm guessing, because of your background and your love of Barcelona, I think you were there 14 years after you left Manchester yeah, United. Yeah, from 2008 to 2023, I think. Okay, do, do you, did you feel as though there's more pressure on you in a Barcelona shirt? I think that uh, we had a lot of pressure after winning because people was expecting from us to win every year. Um, when you are at home, what, what happens is that you care more about the club than maybe players that are coming from abroad. Uh, and this puts you in a position that because you care more, you try to really, eff your effort is even more to, to succeed and, and to perform rather than a foreign player that comes to Barcelona and that he doesn't know the history, he doesn't really feel for the club. It's just another club. It's his, obviously, it's his job and he will do the best he can. But when you are from uh, the roots of the club, when, when you really care about it, it's like you have more pressure, but because you want personally the club to perform well. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about some of the great players you played at Barcelona with and we'll talk more about Messi a bit later on. But just your time at Manchester United, you played with some wonderful players. You mentioned Rio and, and Vidic as well. You've got Rooney, you've got Ronaldo, the Ballon d'Or winner, you've got Tevez as well. In that group of United players, who do you rate highly? Well, that it was amazing that time because I was very, very young and every day when I arrived to the dressing room, I mean, we had like Giggs, Scolzi, Gary Neville. Uh, so that generation from 92, that it was incredible. But at the same time, we had the Roonies, Ronaldos, like all the young uh, that were coming. Um, I remember that time like crazy. Every training, it was like a, a chance to prove that uh, I was able to play at that level. Uh, it was tough, I can tell you, because, I mean, every day you have to mark Rooney or Van Nistelrooy or Cristiano and, and it puts you, but it, it, it's good because for you then the level every day, it's better and better and better because you have a challenge to face. Um, and it helped me a lot then to become the player that I was, thanks to also those trainings that we had during those years at Manchester mm -hmm. United. When you look at someone like Rio Ferdinand, who for me is the greatest defender in Premier League history, how highly do you rate him? And you watching him as you're doing your education for at Manchester United, what influence did he have on you? A lot, because I think that uh, obviously him with the English style, because uh, in Premier League, I mean, you play a little bit different than in Spain, but we were very similar the way to, uh, we play. Um, and also, I mean, in terms of, of physically, I mean, we were very similar. He was stronger, but uh, we wanted to play the ball the Premier League, you don't play as much as in Barcelona. In Barcelona, we took a lot of risk, but we were very similar playing. And for me, when I arrived there, for me, he was the guy to, to really see what he's doing, to learn from him. To He gave a lot of advice at that time that was very good for me. Um, so, yeah, I consider him also. Some people, they say John Terry. For me, Rio was the best uh, of all time in the Premier League, at, at least from what I saw. Because sometimes what happened off the pitch seems that puts you, uh, people consider you a little bit less for what, because you have different interests outside of the, the pitch, etc. And Rio is this style of guy like I am in Spain, but then on the pitch he was like incredible. He performed always at a very high level and was a great example. Mm. Mm. I noticed it was interesting when you rattled off all the great players that you played with at Manchester United, Skulls and Ronaldo and, and Rio. And Vinic. You stuck Gary Neville in there as well. No, we love Gary Neville, right? We <laughs> no, love no, Gary no. Neville. I put Gary Neville there because I was mentioning Giggs, Skulls, yeah. all, all the players the that came. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Not because of his level. No, <laughs> <laughs> Not he will, because. He will kill me now. <laughs> Gaz, I love you. Uh, I mean, I love Gaz and uh, he's, he's an amazing right back. I think he's one of the best right backs for sure or in the Manchester United history. Very English style. I mean, he loves to tackle and go to the, you know, uh, to the grass. And, and really, I remember one game against Reyes, uh, against Arsenal at Old Trafford, that he just destroyed him. But it, it was his style of, of, of play. And, and I mean, I love I loved the guy. Do, do you think he could play today's right-back role? You look at someone like Carl Walker or even Trent at Liverpool. And it's, it's I a think, totally different role now. I think now, that football it? has developed so much in the last few years. Uh, 
I, I think that any center back in the 90s or any right back or any left back or any keeper, goalkeeper uh, in the 90s could not play now uh, football. In the in the way it's played right now, yeah. eh? because not because they didn't have the talent. Of course, they had the talent and they were the best in that generation. But uh, because the way of play is totally different. I mean, for a keeper yeah. of the nineties, that was just a, a matter of saving. Now they have to play with the feet, mm. and at that time you 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 weren't trained to do that. Uh, so if you put now. I don't know. One of the best, even no. This one was I was say Van der Sar. Van der Sar was it's my Michael. my age. It's Michael. Now you put him as Michael or, or Barthez at the time, and he loved to play. Yeah, but yeah. he. Uh, my opinion is that they really need to adapt his way of play to to the one that we play right now, and to train this you need years because you have to do it when you are a child. So it's very difficult to really um put your mind to to really change the way that you understand football mm. yeah. uh, i should point out people joining us late uh, gerald you are here of course to tell us about your king's league people can head to tiktok youtube etc and search king's league to find out more about it um you recently you discussed something interesting you said i'm quoting you here you said one reason we created the king's league is i saw my kids watching a football match and after 10 minutes they were on their phones and their tablets and watching other things at the same time football is an entertainment so it's not just competing with other sports it competes with netflix amazon youtube mm -hmm. tiktok everyone has a limited time football for 90 minutes is not as exciting do you, do you think 90 minutes is too long now for football no i mean i, I believe that football uh, it's the king of sports and will be forever and there will be always uh, the, the sport that will have more audience is football um the thing is that obviously this new generation uh, has grown up with so many content around them that it's very difficult to focus just on football. Um, and when I say that football, and they, they don't fight anymore with basketball or tennis or other sports is because I really believe that there is a point where right now all sports can be considered entertainment and that they are fighting also with the platforms like TikTok, Twitch, uh, YouTube, uh, Twitter, etc or like uh, Netflix, HBO, Amazon, and these kind of things. Because at the end of the day, you have 24 hours a day, uh, eight normally you sleep, you have 16 hours while some of that time you are working and you cannot do anything. And then you have a small period of time every day that you can dedicate to something that you like. Mm. And here in that small uh, period of time, you can consume all of this. And there is so many things. And TikTok is very exciting for kids because it's like, 30 seconds of video and boom, boom, boom. And they can be like three, four hours uh, spending on TikTok. And just to put an example. So what I'm saying is that it's not just football. Now, this sport is competing against all the other things. Uh, and in a way, I think, but it's very difficult for traditional sports. It will need to be a little bit modernized with the rules maybe but it's very difficult to change the rules because people is very against that we cannot change football yeah. uh, mm -hmm. with all these traditional people but at some point i mean and and it's proven in the history of that game football has changed the rules uh, at some point i remember in the 80s or 90s that you the, sen the defender can pass the ball to the keeper and the keeper take it with hands and now you cannot do that so this is the kind of rules that little by little i think that you need to really modernize a little bit the 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 the, the sport mm. So kids, if you're listening, get off YouTube. Or no, stay, you, stay on it. Do you know what? Because my, my, my little boy, and he makes a good point, my little boy who, who likes football, he won't sit and watch a 90-minute game. Absolutely not. No chance. His attention span, he watches it for 10 minutes, he's yeah. off on his phone. YouTube. Yeah, it's sad. Exactly. That's, so, that's the way yeah, we're going there, exactly. right? Exactly. Um, stay on YouTube, though, because you can see more from our wonderful guest, Gerald P.K. Talk Sport Drive. Super opinionated sporting debate. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.